Hey, so this is Joe, and this is the first video in the 13th chapter of Stuart's Calculus. We're going to be talking about vector-valued functions. So vector-valued functions, they're, they're not terribly complicated. They come in this form, and all they are is a vector, um, the components of which, instead of being constants or numbers, they are functions of some same parameter. So really a vector-valued function, um, parame the parametric equations that we were dealing with in single variable calculus, where we'd have an x is equal to some f of t, and a y is equal to some g of t, parametric equations of that ilk, really a vector-valued function is uh, that, that could be expressed as a vector-valued function to the to to the effect of f of t, g of t, but and it's a two-component vector-valued function, a vector in um, 2D space. So really, a vector-valued function that we're going to be the, of the kind we're going to be talking about in this course is just a parametric equation um, with a third com a third z component. The z component, namely, being that this h of t, and it's just easier to express these parametric equations as a three-dimensional vector um, than as two equations like this, just to you know save room uh, in terms of writing, and it gives us this one nice vector that we can talk about when we're talking about the entire um, uh, parametric equation like that. So, um, in this chapter, really all we're going to be doing is dealing with some problems that kind of let us manipulate uh, these three-dimensional um, vector valued functions and then in the next chapter we're going to actually be applying calculus to them uh, so meaning we're going to be able to take um, take derivatives and integrals of vector valued functions and that's not terribly complicated either but before that we need to show that we can take the limit of a vector valued function because right a derivative and an integral they're both kinds of limits so we can't taking the limit of a vector valued function is pretty easy we can take the limit as t the parameter approaches some value a um, and we're taking the limit of the whole vector valued function that will be equal to and it's just the limit as t approaches the same value of each of the components so the limit as t approaches a of f of t the limit as t approaches a of g of t and the limit as t approaches a of h of t and so taking the limit of a vector valued function is not terribly difficult and, it, and so as you can imagine, taking the derivative and the integral is going to look something similar to this form. But we're not going to do that right now. We're just going to kind of get our bearings with um, vector-valued functions um, by doing a couple practice problems. All right, so we're going to do number 27 on page 870 in your book. And the question asks us to show that this vector-valued function right here lies on this function. So from our conics um, section, you should be able to remember or kind of be able to identify what uh, this is a function of and this is going to be a kind of cone um, and I could show you the graph of that function right now to kind of let you get an idea of what this uh, vector valued function should look like if you're able to um, sort of do that with vector valued functions although it's kind of difficult to visualize them but that's the reason why I'm not going to show you the gr these graphs until afterwards, just because it is difficult to visualize 3D graphs and vector-valued functions in a way that it's not with 2D functions. And so because of that, it's a good skill to be able to get used to solving problems like this without actually looking at graphs, just because you, there are going to be scenarios where you're not going to have 3D graphing software available to you, or you, you'll get a function that you won't be able to visualize. So. We know that in order to prove that r of t lies on z squared equals x squared plus y squared, we need to be able to show that these that there is going to be a value on this cone because this cone covers a lot is an entire surface, whereas this vector-valued function is basically just a curve in three-dimensional space. We need to show that there's a value on this surface for every value that is going to be on this curve. And so we're going to need to set the components of this equal to variables in this function. And that's pretty easy because these components, they're all, um, they or all correspond to one of these Cartesian variables. Namely, we've got our x is a t cosine of t, our y is a t sine of t, and our z is just a t. So in order to show that there's a value for each of these components on this surface, all we need to do is plug in 
these uh, functions of t into the their respective variables here. So, and what we can even do is show is uh, omit plugging in one and prove that that other variable is going to end up being the one here. So, for example, we can plug in our x and our y, and if and solve for z here. And if the z ends up being a t, then we know that um, that there's going to be a value for uh, each value in the equation. Uh, there's going to be a value on that surface for each of these parametric values um, because they'll they'll line up. So we got a z squared is equal to so our x squared. We plug in t cosine t. We're going to get a t squared cosine squared t. And then our y squared, you plug in a c t sine t. So it's going to be plus a t squared sine squared t. And we can factor out our t squared, and we're going to get cosine squared plus sine squared, which is 1. So we just get t squared is equal to z squared. And then z is going to be equal to plus or minus t. And z over here is a plus t. So that means we're good. One of those solutions works. And that means that. Um, this equation lines up. If you plug in a t cosine t and a t sine t, you'll get a t, meaning that there's a value um, on this surface for every value on this parametric equation. So we can say, yes, this vector valued function does lie on this cone. And now we can go and look at the graph, graphs of both of these functions, and I'll prove to you that they, they, they line up, just, uh, just kind of for argument's sake. All right, so we've got our cone, which is the z squared equals x squared plus y squared. And then we've got our vector value function, which is x is uh, cosine t, y is t sine t, and z is t. And the blue curve right here, that is our vector value function. You see it lies, on, um, it lies directly on our cone right here. And if you, if you take a minute and look, remember one of our other possible solutions for z for our equation was a negative t? Well, if we put that negative t, that negative t was a possibility because this cone extends symmetrically um, a, on the positive and the negative z-axis. So that means if we had a negative t for our z component right here, it would still lie, oops, it would still lie on the on the on the surface, just on the negative side of the surface. So we put a negative t in there, and look, we got the same curve, just uh, it's going in the negative z direction, and it still lies on um, that surface. So that is it for this problem. Let's go move on to one more problem, um, and then we will call it quits for this kind of intro to vector valued function stuff, and we'll move on to applying calculus to it in the next video. All right, so now we're going to do number 30 um, on the same page. And the question asks us, when does this vector value function intersect um, this, func this surface right here? And you might be able to identify this as a surface with a, um, yes, is that, sorry, not as a surface, as a sphere. And it is a sphere. And so all we need to do to figure out when this curve intersects this surface is um, divide these components up into the Cartesian variables plug them in um, to this equation, and uh, solve for t. Not terribly complicated, very similar to the pro our process in the previous problem. So we've got x is sine t, th this is the parametrization, y is cosine of t, and z is t. And so now we plug this into here, and we're going to get sine squared t plus cosine squared t plus t squared is equal to 5. And so the sine squared plus the cosine squared is going to be 1 plus t squared is equal to 5, so that we subtract over the 1, we got a t squared is equal to 4, and then our t is equal to plus or minus 2. And so those are the two points of t um, when the curve r will, or is going inter to intersect, intersect the surface. So that's it for our intro to vector valued functions. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the next video when we start applying calculus to uh, parametric functions like this. Thanks.